today I'm going to be talking about the conception of country music. Country music was um, born out of um, various interests, various influences across the southern United States. Um, its main styles include folk music, blues, and old time music. Folk music is uh, mostly found in the southern Appalachian region with that include ballads and um, English folk songs and Scots Irish ballads along with old time music and basically religious music. Okay, these songs were passed from generation to generation, uh, basically remembered from memory. Um, they weren't recorded until 1882 when, uh, when Child came down from Harvard and was interested in preserving these forms of music uh, during the Industrial Revolution. Um, he saw a decline in regional identity when uh, from the introduction of the railroad and other forms of mass, mass uh, transportation came into play. As these things came into play, uh, music, musical identity began to spread out and combine other forms of music found across the United States that it hadn't been exposed to before. Um, Cecil Sharp, he, uh, he was, in 1916, he came across from England to uh, also study these forms of music that were found in Southern Appalachian uh, homes that he was, uh, he was interested in finding the connections, comparing and contrasting between the English ballads and American ballads brought over by the English Southern of the country. He, um, he spent on nine weeks uh, between two years uh, going from door to door preserving these songs that had stayed in the family, stayed in the home for generations. Um, both men uh, used recording techniques that are way completely outdated now, um, but most were heavy and uh, hand cranked and acoustic. They'd they, uh, they had no real um, good way to clearly produce these songs besides hand writing them down, transcribing them to sheet music. Um, these field recording session, sessions that Child and Sharp held sparked an interest um, with record companies to exploit these forms of songs to the public that had never been exposed to. The most famous, the Bristol Sessions of 1927, held in Bristol, Tennessee, Virginia, um, were ran by Ralph Beer, who was hired by Victor Record Company. He, uh, he brought in uh, many artists he had worked before with other record companies to record their songs. The unique thing about the Bristol Sessions was Peer, uh, in order to create more revenue for the record label, he encouraged the artists to take these old songs they had learned when they were a child and uh, change them, create, uh, make them new. Uh, he, uh, in this way, he could gain the copyright of the songs and create fresh revenue for the record label. Uh, there are many artists involved in the Bristol Sessions. The most two influential artists were the Carter family and Jimmy Rogers. Um, the Carter family, from they came from uh, Southwest Virginia. They um, they focused more on religious religious music and folk songs. Um, basically, any folk, any sort of string band song that we hear today. That's they that was their main um, genre that they they dealt with. Um, they're a three piece band. Uh, you had A. P. Carter, Sarah. Her mother, Maybell. Uh, uh, Sarah Maybell did backups, and AP was the lead singer. Um, they, uh, and then yeah, on the other hand, you had Jimmy Rogers, who came from the Delta, Mississippi, up in Mississippi. Uh, he was born and raised on the railroads from uh, an early age. He uh, he gained his style of music and playing from. The, the railroad hands he worked with, from the hobos he interacted with. Um, basically, his style is known as um, the rambling, rowdy, rough country kind of music that you hear today. Uh, he was the most popular and most well-liked of all the artists 
in the Bristol sessions. Um, he went on to uh, to record many more albums, but died in an early age, at the age of 36 in 1942, uh, of uh, of tuberculosis. Um, as far as country music goes today, um, you can s the unique thing about the genre is that you can still see the traditions that originated the, the music industry today. Um, despite the fact that you have homogenization of, um, of all the genres in popular country, you also have traditionalists that still revive these old forms of music that date back to the early um, settlers of the country. Um, uh, many artists don't even they don't even though they don't come from the region specifically they they still see the uniqueness and the the importance of this style of music that um, and so they they want to preserve that style of music for a future generation also just because they can do it uh, um, current trends right now um, many bands are leaning towards that more traditional, original form of country music that you would have heard back in the Bristol Sessions. They, uh, they tend to be more traditionalist, um, playing more Americana style of music. Uh, even though some don't like that, that title of traditionalist, they, they enjoy just the original, like, trueness of the style of music. This isn't unique, though. Um, back in the 1960s, they, there was another large folk revival. And um, the unique thing about just country music in general is that I believe it will continue to, to, uh, to grow and uh, create new music, but still hold